Well, I've beaten up my joiner knives enough times that I think it's uh, about time to change them. Uh, I've hit some knots, some nails, just some hard pieces of wood. Either way, it's time for them to go. In the past, I've been using these Powertech knives, which uh, are reasonably priced, they're like 15 bucks or something. Only downside is that you have to replace them. So this time I wanted to go with something that was going to be a little bit more uh, durable. So I ordered these Titan knives, they're carbide tipped. Uh, I got them on the same website that you get the Helix uh, helical cutter heads on. I was going to get a helical head, but uh, considering they're about three, three fifty, and this joiner cost me about five hundred, maybe ten years ago, I don't think I'm ready to invest that kind of money in the joiner. Uh, I think when I do go for a, a helical head, I'm probably going to put it in the thickness planer, and I'll just use the joiner for flattening faces and edges, and then I can do the nice final cut on the thickness planer. So I'm looking forward to cracking this open. It was uh, fast shipping, cost around eighty dollars. I, I think that's probably okay. These are about $15 each, so we'll see if that pays out in the long run, but if I don't have to change joiner knives as frequently, I'm pretty happy. So all you'll need for this job are, of course, the new knives, a wrench, in this case, for the rigid joiner, it's a 5 16 a Phillips screwdriver, and under here, this is a little quick workshop tip, the hex wrench that I could never find, which I keep on a magnet underneath the saw, and uh, importantly for the setup, I like to use a block of wood, preferably some kind of hardwood that is perfectly flat. In other words, if you put it on your uh, your flat joiner table or table table saw table, you shouldn't see any gaps under it. I got it flat on both sides, so I can use this for lining up the knives later. Uh, let's get started. First thing you need to do is remove the uh, the blade guard, and that's just a Phillips screw underneath that prevents this thing from moving up and down. Comes out really easily and then you just pull the guard straight up. And you'll see this spring, this is spring loaded, so you see it snap back into place as I'm lifting. And when you put it back, it's real easy to just give that turn until it pops back into place. Now on the inside, you can see that you have four bolts here. These are just for uh, applying pressure to this chip deflector, and it also clamps the blade in place. So take these off, you just tighten, not loosen. You're tightening because you want to screw them into the chip deflector so there's not as much pressure. When you loosen these, it applies pressure against the uh, back of the housing there. So turn it clockwise, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Just a standard thread. And once those are loose, this whole mechanism should slide out of place. There's the blade. It's hard to see because it's kind of dirty. I've been um, joining a lot of green wood. And then you take out the chip deflector right there. And you can see these two hex bolts in the bottom. That's what you need the Allen wrench for. Uh, when you raise or lower those, that's what moves the blade up or down so that it, uh, it's uh, perfectly flush with the outfeed table. Because these things were so caked up, I think I'm going to drop them inside some pitch and resin remover for a little bit. All right, I got the three chip deflectors clean and wiped down with a thin coat of oil, and now it's time to crack open the knives and see what we got here. All right, interesting. You hardly even see the carbide edge on there, but I guess it's there. Yep, there it is. You can see it on the side a little bit better. That feels just as sharp as the steel one, so I'm curious to see how well these hold up. Alright, so now that everything is unpackaged and clean, it's just a matter of putting it back in in the reverse order that it came out. So the, uh, the blades are going to cut this way, so that goes on this side. And then the chip deflector with the round part that deflects the chips on the top. If any of your screws are out too much, you may have to tighten them back up a hair. And now it's time for the fun precision setup part. Uh, a trick that I like to use is to take a block of wood like this one. It doesn't even have to be perfectly square, it just helps if it has a straight edge on it. And somewhere on this infeed table, I'm going to draw a line. And now I'm going to move it a little bit and draw another line, maybe 
I'm going to redraw that line because it didn't come out quite as clear as I wanted. There we go. And now I'm going to move it maybe, hmm, I'm going to try close to an eighth of an inch. Maybe, yeah, about an eighth of an inch should do it. Doesn't have to be perfect. Eighth of an inch is a measurement that I'm comfortable with. And to explain what I'm doing, uh, there are a couple different schools of thought in setting up joiner knives. One is that the, the knife should be perfectly flush with the outfeed table because the way that this works is the board goes through on the infeed table, which is a little bit lower, and the outfeed table, which is a little bit higher, is at the same height as the knife. So as the board runs through, the part that's cut away by the knife is supported by the outfeed table, and it doesn't drop down one way or the other. If the knives are too high, then it cuts away too much material, and you'll pass a pivot point on the board when it drops down, and that'll give you a, a not straight edge. And the other way is if the blade is too low, it won't cut away enough material and the board will start to ride uphill on the outfeed table and you'll end up with a curved board. So you want to have it pretty close to the height of the outfeed table. But one thing that I've found, especially with the steel knives, is that uh, if you make a steel knife perfectly flush with your outfeed table, uh, you're dealing with a very, very sharp edge here. And over time, after cutting some uh, some hard wood or maybe hitting some knots, that edge is going to wear down and, it, and it's going to end up being just slightly a fraction of a hair below your outfeed table. So uh, I like to go just a little bit over. That's my preference. You can do it whatever way works for you. Um, and the reason for doing that, is, aside from keeping the board straight, if you have it um, set too high, then what's going to happen when the, the board gets past the end of the infeed table, it will actually drop down a little bit right there. And that'll give you a little, uh, what's called snipe at the end, where it's gonna cut just a little noticeable piece on the end of the board there. Uh, so if you're gluing panels together, or gluing two boards together, you'll end up with a little bit of a gap at the end. If you're cutting the end off, it doesn't matter. So uh, again, back to the reason I put these two lines here. This is how I like to uh, to calibrate my saw. I, I don't uh, use calipers or uh, dial gauges or anything like that. I just um, I tighten up the screws just enough to hold this thing in place and I adjust the set screws to get it pretty close to where I want it and then I move the board over until it is at the first line and I put just a little bit of pressure on it, hold it flat and then I turn the wheel manually and I see how much it moves it. In that case whoop, I should probably start with it on the other side of the board. Let me try that again. Just a little bit of finger pressure on there and then I'll rotate it and I'm going to see how much it moves the board. And in this case it went a little beyond that eighth of an inch line and that, that's what I'm going to shoot for. It's going to give pretty close to a perfectly flat cut. So I'm going to move that screw down, that set screw, just a little bit and then I'll come back and do some more adjustments and by a little bit in this case I'm I'm talking like all right, maybe about that much I'm going to tighten it. Maybe an you know, eighth of a turn, sixteenth of a turn, and then I'll give that a little, little bit of pressure down. And try it again. I'm going to put it right up to that line. Put that back here first. Put it right up to that line. Just a finger pressure. And a little bit closer. So then it's just back and forth. I'm going to move it over here, do the same thing, then back over here and the same thing because of course you want to make sure that the, the knives are, are not uh, leaning to one side or the other. So back and forth with uh, you know with these set screws tight enough to hold this in place but still loose enough for it to move. And then when that's all done, I tighten up the screws and I check it again. And, and if it's good, then I leave it and move on to the next one. So this is, this is why people hate changing, changing joiner knives. Anyway, this is going to take a while, so I'm not going to film the whole thing. I'll just come back and show the finished result and then do some test cuts. So after a great deal of excitement, I now have this set so that each one of these moves approximately a sixteenth of an inch. I decided not to go the full eighth since either these are carbide blades and I wanted to try something different. So if I put just finger pressure right on that knot there, uh, turn the blade, I get maybe just a hair over a sixteenth. And let's see what we got over here, just to make sure it's even on both sides we get just about the same. 
Um, and you can see, if you look at the bottom of this, uh, you can see pretty clearly on the camera, you'll notice that when it's at its peak, when it's moving, there's almost no space there. So this is, this is a measurement that's not enough that's going to really concern me as far as snipe goes. But either way, let's uh, put it back together and uh, do the test run. That was a test with a piece of Purple Heart, which is a very hard wood, and it looks like everything turned out just the way I wanted it to. The surface is smooth, I don't see any chips or splinters, and on the trailing end, I don't notice any significant signs of snipe. There's a very slight line there, you can see, maybe, right about there, but it's hardly noticeable and that would not affect anything. So it looks like the two marks eighth of an inch apart, or probably a little closer to sixteenth, maybe uh, three thirty seconds is the way to go. And that's how to change the knives in a joiner.